Hello students. Today I am going to deal with another very vital and important topic for competitive exams. That is to find the day of any given date, whether it is in past or it is in future. So, for understanding this concept, we need to understand some of the basic concepts underlying this calculation method. Now. The first thing which I am going to tell you is about the types of years. All the years are divided into two broad categories. One are the normal years and other are the leap years. As you all know, a normal year has 365 days and a leap year has one additional day 360 six days now which years are called leap years and which are called normal years see i'll give you some examples any year which is not divisible by four is a normal year say we have 1983 1983 if you divide this by 4 you will get a remainder which is not 0 so this year 1983 is a normal year consisting of 365 days similarly if you take an example of a leap year a leap year is one which is divisible by 4 say we have the example 1, 8, 0, 8, say year 1808. Now, since 1808 is exactly divisible by 4, this is a leap year consisting of 366 days. So, simultaneously, we have one more very important concept here concerning the century years now century years are all those years which have two zeros at the end say we have 700 1300 1900 all these years are century years and for checking whether a century year is a normal year or a leap year you have to check the divisibility of this year by 400 and not by 4. Since 700 is not divisible by 400, divisible by 400, when you divide this by 400, you will get a remainder. So these years, all these years are normal years. Whereas all the century years which are divisible by 400 in case of century years years which are divisible by 400 just like we have 1200 1600 2000 and so on these years are all divisible by 400 so they are also leap years so now you know which year is a leap year and which year is a normal year now coming to the concept of odd days. Now what are odd days? If you understand what are odd days then half the problem of finding a day of a given date is solved. Odd days, say we have 365 days in a year, in a normal year. If you divide this by 7, obviously 7 days in a week, so you get one as the remainder. So, in a normal year, we have one odd day, which is excessive, means when you divide 365 days into weeks, we will have one day left, that is called odd day. In case of a leap year, you have 366 days and when you divide 
366 by 7 you get 2 as the remainder so in case of a leap year you have 2 odd days so this is very important part of this trick in a normal year there are one there is only one odd day and in a leap year there are two odd days now coming to the second important concept concerning this trick 35 we have the first century year 100 now 100 is not divisible by 400 so it is not a leap year now if it is not a leap year then in 100 years we have 24 leap years when we divide this by 4 we get 25 but that includes 100 also which is not a leap year so we get 24 leap years and the remaining 76 normal years 76 normal years have one odd day each so number of odd days is 76 in these 76 years and leap years have two odd days so 24 multiplied by 2 that is 48 so total number of odd days in 100 years is 124 and odd days cannot be greater than 7 so divide 124 by 7 and you get the remainder as say 7 1 the 7 54 7 7 the 49 you remainder as 5 so these are the 5 odd days in 100 years so we have to remember one table here these are 100 years and these are the odd days in 100 days 100 years you have 5 odd days now you can double the number of odd days because 200 is also not a leap year so 100 have 5 odd days so 10 but it cannot be greater than 7 so 10 can be divided into 7 plus 3 so 3 now coming to the next century 300 5 into 3 15 so when you divide 15 into weeks 7 7 and 1 so you get 1 but when you arrive at 400 years 400 is divisible by 400 so this is a leap year so 5 fours are 20 and 400 also is a leap year so 21 and when you divide 21 by 7 it is exactly divisible so there are no odd days so for 400 there are 0 odd days so this is another important concept which we have to remember for every 400 years there are 0 odd days and then for 100 years we have 5 odd days 200 years we have 3 odd days and for 300 years we have 1 odd day now coming to the third important concept of months as you all know that starting from january february march april may june july august september october november and december you already know the number of days of these months 31 now february it has either 28 or 29 days depending on whether it is a normal year or a leap year then 31 30 31 30 31 31 30 31 30 31 now when you divide it into weeks you will get the number of odd days of every month so 31 7 for the 28 so you get for 31 days of any month you get 3 odd days why because 31 divided by 7 is 28 uh, 7 for the 28 and remaining 3 days are the odd days similarly for 30 7 for the 28 days and 2 odd days for 29 7 for the 28 1 odd day and for 28 obviously 7 for the 28 0 odd days so this is another important concept which you have to remember. Now we have three important concepts which are to be taken into consideration for finding the day of any date. First is 
the number of odd days in a normal year and in a leap year. This is the first concept. Second is the century years up to 400, number of odd days in each and then month wise number of odd days. Now the final concept which you have to remember is you have this circle here. We have 0 odd days, 1 odd day, 2 odd day, 3 odd days, 4 odd days, 5 odd days and 6 odd days. 0 to 6, now we have the days of the week corresponding to, to these many odd days. Now, if there are finally 0 odd days, then the day is Sunday. 1 odd day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So this is the final concept which we have to remember to find the day of any date. Now let us use these concepts to illustrate this concept by using one or two examples. I will this off. Let us take one date in which we have a normal year and in the second example we will be taking one date in which it is a leap year. Now, the first example which I am taking is say we have 20th October, say we have 1857. I will take a different century, 1857. Now, the first step is to because 1857, the year 1857 is not complete, we have reached up to October only. So, we have 1856 complete years and one incomplete year that is from January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September and October. We have up to October. So, we have this complete year now, 1856 complete years and one half year. This 1856 we divide into 1600, 200 and 56. Now see I have divided into multiples of 400 because there can be only 1600 years, multiples of 400. Every 400 years have 0 odd days like here. So 1600 has 0 odd days, 200 have 3 odd days. And for 56 years, we have to find the number of leap years now. 56 divided by 4 gives us 14 and the remaining normal years 42. So, 42 and 14. Now, for finding the odd days of this, this is normal year. So, 42 into 1 and this is leap year. Leap year has 2 odd days. So, total. 42 plus 28 gives us 70 and when you divide 70 into weeks of 777 7, 7, then you have it is exactly divisible by 7 so this is 0 odd days so the total number of odd days in 1856 years is 0 plus 3 plus 0 that is 3 odd days now we have 3 odd days for this now come to the incomplete year we have 31 days, January, I told you just now here, the number of odd days for each month. January has 31, so 3, February. Now this 1857 is a non-leap year, not divisible by 4. And in non-leap year, you have 28 days. So 28 days has 0 odd days. 0, 3, 31, 30 means 2. Then 31 means 3, 30 means 2, 31, 3, 31, 3, 32 and October we have 20 days. Now these are the total number of days. You can cancel out 7s from here because 7 constitute, constitute 0 odd days. 2 plus 3 plus 2 is 7. So I have cancelled out 7. The remaining 3. 6, 8, 11, 14, 34. So, 34 divided by 7 
complete weeks, 7 fours are 28, so remaining 6. So you have 6 odd days up to 20th October of 1857. 6 plus 3, total odd days is 6 plus 3, 9. Again divide this into weeks, so you have 7 plus 2, so 2 odd days. And in this circle, for 2 odd days, you have a Tuesday. So, a 20th October 1857 was a Tuesday. Seems a bit complicated obviously, but you have to practice at least 8 to 10 problems of this kind so that you can grasp this trick and reduce your speed also. Now, reduce your timing for uh, calculation of this. Now, let us take one example of a leap year. Say we have 15th August of a, a particular leap year, say 1956. Now here, 1956 is incomplete. So we have 1955 years divided into 1600, multiples of 400, then multiples of 100, 300 and 55. This is 0 and for 300 years you have 1 odd day, 55 to be divided by 4. So, 4, 1, 4, 3, so 13 leap years and remaining 42 normal years, normal years 42 into 1, leap years 13 into 2, so odd days 42 plus 26, 68 and when you divide 68, divide by 7, you get 7, 9 the 63, so 5 remainder, so 5, 1 and 0, so total 6 odd days up to 1955 and come to the month now, January, February, March, April, May, June, July and August because we have August here, so in August we have 15 days remaining according to this 1956 is a leap year, so here in February you have 29 days, so one odd day, this is very important, January 31, 3 odd days, 31, 3, 32, 31, 3, 32, 31, 3, now cancel 7s, 3, 1, 3, 7, 3, 2, 2 is 7, 15 plus 3, 18, now 18 when you divide into weeks, 7 2s are 14 goes and remaining is 4. Now total number of odd days 4 plus 5 9 plus 1 10. 10 odd days again it is more than 7 so divided by 7 you are having 3 remainder 3. So corresponding to 3 you have a Wednesday. So 15th August 1956 was a Wednesday. I hope this concept becomes a bit clearer now. You have to practice this a lot in order to master this. Take 5 or 6 good examples, do them yourself, only then you will be able to remember these points for finding the day of any date. Keep learning, keep enjoying and share and subscribe the video if you like it.